Hello everyone and welcome to the second session in our How to Travel 2021 event series and tonight we're going to be looking at family escapes. So for those of you who weren't, uh, who didn't join us last time, my name's Claire Irvin, I'm Head of Travel at The Telegraph and um, I'd like to welcome you to, uh, to this webinar. So wow, it's been another tumultuous couple of weeks uh, since we saw you last. And uh, for all would-be holiday makers, there's been, um, I'd like to say highs and lows, but I think mostly lows. Uh, you know, more travel plan plans cancelled, um, you know, raised hopes uh, and then dashed again. And, uh, and actually a really big focus subsequently on um, the potential for holidays in the UK, which of course has, has much to offer um, families and um, a lot of which we'll touch on later. Um, but, you know, all of this confusion and chaos, you know, is bad enough if you are an individual. But if you have a family in tow and you are juggling school holiday dates and, uh, you know, you're, th there's more than one person to deal with um, on insurance and, and cancellations, you know, it's an expensive and a worrying business. And if you're also juggling homeschooling, working from home and all of those other things, you know, holidays at the moment, uh, you know, you need them to be something to look forward to rather than something that's just adding stress. So <clears throat> hopefully in the next 45 minutes, we will help alleviate some of that stress, give you some potential solutions for how to have a holiday this year and um, and also some inspiration for that. So um, we're going to be covering the latest travel restrictions, um, you know, looking ahead to what you can expect over the next weeks and months. And, you know, hopefully you uh, you will leave the session feeling a little bit more clued up um, and with a bit more of a plan, even if it's just a halt fire for a couple of weeks um, uh, for your summer holiday this year. Without further ado, let me um, introduce you to um, my colleagues that are going to join me this evening um, and a familiar face, face to most of you, Ben Ross, who's Deputy Head of Travel. Also joining us. I'm here, I'm here. Yeah, and also joining us is um, Chief Consumer and Culture Editor Nick Trend, another familiar familiar face um, to a lot of you. Hi. So, I mean, you know, here we are again, um, lots more changes and um, not just to uh, to the virus and to restrictions, but to travel itself. What 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 have you been up to over the last couple of weeks, Ben? How how's editorial been been reacting to all of this? Well, it's, it's been a, a little bit of, of, of the same sort of thing that we've been working out for the whole year, which is reacting to the, the changing environment that we're being placed in um, every week. I've never never experienced a time when, uh, in terms of editorial, we've been required to sort of put our finger in the air and, and, and make a judgment so quickly about, about what we think our readers are going to be needing to, to read about and to get advice on, and also immediately to, to react to what's going on from a government point of view. Over the last couple of weeks, I guess the big thing has been you know, quarantine hotels, that's not the favourite thing I think any any uh, potential holiday maker wants to read about. And government rules on testing, obviously. Um, and I guess we're sort of trying to balance all that sort of stuff, which are real um, uh, uh, engagement from the government with the sort of general sense that we, we're not quite clear on where we are in terms of the sort of medium to long term with, 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 with travel. Um, so I guess we're, we're balancing all the stuff that you'd hope that we'd be producing, I think, on a, on a weekly basis, the inspiration and the advice, um, with this sort of sense that we need to give a little bit of analysis and forward focus on where we might be, let's say, in a few staged times, like what, what we're going to be doing for families at Easter. Are, we, are families going to be able to go abroad then? Similarly, at May half term, similarly at the summer holidays. Um, and... I think I think obviously we're going to try and get some some clarity of that during during the webinar today. But I think one of the things that we can all be be aware of at this point is that there isn't there isn't huge certainty at this point. I don't think there's there's a there's a need for readers and and for anyone joining us today to feel utterly gloomy about the prospects of of summer holidays abroad. Um, it is after all only February, and and last year we were in lockdown until the beginning of July. So there is plenty of time for for things to change for the for the for the map of travel to alter in the traveler's favor 
Um, Vaccination is obviously a, a, a huge and very, very important, and we've been talking a lot about that. Um, and we have seen a lot of booking uh, amongst our readers for the summer holidays as, as, as the, the last couple of weeks have gone by. I think it's important to bear in mind though that quite a lot of that readership is likely to be people who aren't necessarily um, traveling with families. You know, we're, we're getting lots of excited views from tour operators about the fact that their bookings are going up, but it may well be that those people are people who are more flexible, who maybe aren't absolutely um, stuck around the idea of summer holidays if they, if they are traveling and who are more flexible about being able to move things around at the drop of a hat, which, as we all know, all of us parents, is incredibly hard to do uh, if you're traveling with kids. Um, and then I guess we're, we're all thinking a little bit more about the UK as a result of that. And we have been yeah. working so hard to get as much sort of inspirational content a- across to people as we possibly can in, in, in the online forums and in, and in uh, our print sections as well. It's been a really strange uh, period. You know, ordinarily we would probably assume talking about um, the UK so much in January and so much in February because we, we imagine it's cold outside and people want to be inspired by the heat and warmth of the summer. But I think what we're trying to get across is that there's plenty of heat and warmth in, uh, in Britain over the summer and, and, and an awful lot of the things that we might be wanting um, uh, in terms of clarity and certainty might be able to be engaged with if you are travelling in the UK. Yeah, I mean, Mike, we were talking earlier where we um, just before we all came uh, came on air and uh, my mantra at the moment is, you know, last year we were in actual lockdown until July the 4th. And where was I on the afternoon of July the 4th? <laughs> I was at the Ickworth Hotel around the corner. Um, couldn't wait to get back traveling. And, uh, you know, so I think there is still hope. Um for us all and and actually so i've just got to do a shout out again to um to our friends from the states who um are here from los angeles and chicago hi so actually you know a uh, uh, summer holiday in the uk probably feels quite um exotic <laughs> 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 but um, can i just say actually uh, matt who is multitasking badly i know how you feel i had to run off and make sure i hadn't left the hob on earlier um this will be um recorded i think we've um we've already answered that but yeah feel your pain and and that's there for you to watch later um so yeah oh dear um excuse me one moment so in terms of as i say do feel free to um to keep those questions coming um so nick how are you feeling about things well i mean it's Things have, there's no doubt that things have taken a, a turn for the worst in terms of confidence and our ability to, to plan for the future. But I, I think a lot of the uncertainty at the moment is coming from cautiousness from government. I and mean, we have seen it before. We didn't, we, we didn't know until I think after July the 4th whether we were going to be able to go on our summer holidays last year because it took so long to get the travel corridors set up and everything. And, and it's incredibly frustrating. But I think there is every sign the vaccines are working, every sign that that we've got two quite firm dates we can look forward to where hopefully we will know a lot more. The 15th of February, when the first review of the current lockdown is, is happening. I think we've temporarily lost Claire, but no doubt she'll be back again. And then the Prime Minister said on, on Monday that he would be in a position to give us much more concrete information about whether or not we'll be able to take our summer holidays in the UK. Um, he, we think he meant the UK. He referred to our summer holidays. He was... Uh, sure he was totally clear, was he? Yeah, he was... For a man who's so often so precise, he wasn't uh, being particularly precise on that moment. But he said at the end of February, he would give us data which would I- enable that kind of decision to be much more clearly made. And then on the 8th of March, we will know, I think, a lot more about how the the, the roadmap for easing the current restrictions. Schools, it's hope, will be back then. And if you look back to last year, uh, hotels, restaurants, pubs started to reopen roughly a month after schools did. That takes us to the 8th of April, a month from the 8th of March. Easter is on the 6th of April, so it's just conceivable that we might actually be able to, at least in this country, start traveling then. So there are some, although the uncertainty is very wearing and frustrating, there are some quite precise 
updates we can look forward to, I think, where we, we will know more. Although I think the, the shadow of new variants and the risk of importing them into this country is is probably going to be bugging us for quite a few months yet to come. Um, but it, did so you want me to... That, despite all of that, sorry, um, hmm. uh, Nick, but despite all of that, we're still seeing a lot of um, interest in summer holidays in general, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, I think that has stalled a little bit with with the anxieties about new variants. But in the UK, you're, it, in some ways, we're all in a slight double bind. I think if, if you if you definitely want to guarantee a summer holiday, you need to think about the UK and you need to book it now because this, we know that there's huge pressure. If you try and find a cottage in Cornwall at the moment, you're, you're in August or July, your your choices are running out fast. But on the other hand, if you're hopeful that you might get out to Europe still, and I think I think um, there's still a good chance in July and August, we might be able to get to Spain or France. You, you, you're going to need to hold on for a few months. The trouble is if you do that and then it turns out you can't go to the continent, you're not going to have so much choice in, in, in the UK by then because everything will be booked up. So there are some issues to get around. There's a huge, there's an easy solution, Nick. It's booking two holidays. <laughs> one in the uk now okay so let's let's take the, let's take the nice. european holiday or the short or, or the um the overseas holiday what do you think destination um entry restrictions will be for children given that they can't get a vaccine and um and you know what about we're sort of talking about juggling school holidays it's hard enough to find a break during the school holidays anyway if suddenly you then have to postpone you know, will or cancel, will insurers cover, cover kind of school imposed self isolation or COVID cases within bubbles? I mean, what do you think? Well, I, think I think the issue of children's vaccinations is probably a red herring because I don't think that countries will, I think, especially in Europe, a decision will be made when European countries feel that they've covered, that their, their vulnerable groups have been vaccinated. So, once once that's been done and they're more confident just as we are in this this country then i think that there won't be an insistence for many of the key holiday countries that we go to in summer on on vaccines and and the question of insurance is really really tricky i was thinking about this the other day what if you put yourself into the mind of the travel insurance companies at the moment first of all they've got no money because no one's buying travel insurance at the moment. No one's traveling, no one's buying insurance. So their businesses are absolutely on their uppers. Secondly, the underwriters who, who, who supply them with policies, which they then sell on, they then retail those policies, they're not, they're not going to want to cover the current risks of cancellation because they're so much higher than normal. You know, the chances of somebody canceling because their child has to isolate or they get COVID or there's some new government locked down they're so high that it's just not feasible for insurance companies to offer that kind of cover without charging vast amounts for it so i think insurance is probably a little bit of a red herring i think we need to focus on airlines travel companies being much more flexibility about allowing last minute cancellations which they have been doing and i think we probably won't ever quite get the insurance policies that we really want to to cover us but that doesn't mean to say that we can't travel. It just means that we've got to cover our risks in other ways. And in terms, and of, destinations, it, it's, in terms of destinations, it seems quite likely that the palette that we're going to have over the summer will be substantially reduced as well. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any suggestion that wherever we get to in, um, in July or August, that the whole world is going to be our oyster. It's going to, it, we're, we're going to have to be very clear that there will be some destinations that we get to, some that we don't. And, and we're not going to, I, I don't think, um, even Nick, who is one of the most um, pressing men I've ever met in my life, is going to be able yeah. to do exactly what those destinations are going to be today. Um, in a way, I, I think one of the interesting things about how we're booking family holidays in particular is there's a sort of inversion happening at the moment in that um, ordinarily the, the big time when everyone books their family holiday is January and February because they're, they're absolutely petrified about losing that, that, that beach break and they want to make sure they're getting a good value and they make, want to make sure they've got in advance. They want to nail down dates and they want to make that happen. And I've, always, I mean, for, on a personal level, I've always been slightly frantic about that. I mean, we, we deliver a huge amount of content in January, February in order to tell people about all these wonderful things, and then I do absolutely nothing about it until June, at which point I rush around and I always find a brilliant holiday that I can go on to and and, and really enjoy in, uh, in in 
in, in foreign parts. So I think people, in a way, we just have to look at this as a slightly different, different concept. As I say, Nick's right in that we have to absolutely book now if we want to get away in Britain, because it is going to be absolutely ram-packed this, this summer, because people are making sure that they're, they're sort of hedging their holiday bets and making sure they've got one there. But, it, but when it comes to going abroad, yes, we have to box cover. We have to make sure that we're going to think about it a little later. And I don't think it necessarily means that if we suddenly get the opportunity, if the winds change and the clouds part and all the other weather phenomena are in our, in our favour, if suddenly we can get that, that holiday that we can book, let's say, in the beginning of June for later in July, then people will do that. They will change their, 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 their desires because the opportunity is there. We are all, there is a huge pent-up demand in Britain to travel. And yeah. uh, I guess we're going to get on to the environment that we might be travelling into in terms of quarantine and in terms of quarantine hotels and all that sort of thing. But provided there's even the possibility of it and people can function without too much um, retroactive um, quarantine when they come back, I think people will be going and I think we'll be booking. But Jessica's asked the, um, whether we should be booking a family break in the UK now rather than waiting to see if that overseas is possible later on. So she really wants to go to Greece but doesn't want to miss out on good UK options if we can't leave the country. I mean, is the UK really going to get booked up? What, what, what about all those inbound tourists that aren't coming? You know, surely that's going to create some availability and capacity for us later down the line. Or would you book now? I think you've both already... Well, well, I mean, the, Jessica, who's asked that question, is is illustrating what uh, the point I was trying to make. Really, I, I think if you think about it, inbound tourism won't really affect the sort of holidays we we want to take in the summer because most inbound tourism is people visiting UK cities, to be honest, um, or doing tours of the country. The key, I mean, a few Japanese or American tourists might rent a cottage in the Lake District, but not too many. They'll go and visit for a day and move on. There will be some of it, more availability in hotels, places like Edinburgh, for example, which um, whether or not it has a festival, we don't know, but that will be much quieter than usual, so you have those options. But I think that the pressure on the coast, not many people fly in from Spain to go to the British seaside, for example, <laughs> so, so, um, or, in, or even France. So I, I don't think that will help. But you're right. It's, it will always be possible to find somewhere. You may have to go somewhere slightly different. You may have to go to Exmoor rather than the Peak District or the west coast of Scotland rather than Cornwall. But And, and sometimes... Oh, we have those... many um, ins uh, inspirational features online at The Telegraph. Yeah, exact, exactly. And sometimes you discover things through force of circumstance, which Ben was just implying then, which are actually turn out to be enormous fun that you wouldn't necessarily predict it. Most people have a good time on their holiday, no matter where they go in the end. And I'm yeah. sure. So, so I'm just skipping about following um, your questions um, rather than necessarily um, a set order, which is uh, just as well as in case anybody had missed it, I managed to lose my script earlier on as well as you losing the picture of me. So um, the Shirley's asked about passports. So I, I faced this during the last lockdown, actually, it was whether or not I should renew part my kids' passports or wait, and I chose to renew. Um, so she, her question is, would, would you suggest we renew early to avoid any risk of getting caught in a backlog and therefore missing our holiday? My personal uh, advice would be absolutely do it now. Even if it says don't on the website, I had to go through various stages saying, do you really want to do this? Are you sure now, honestly? Um, to which the answer was yes. And I got my passports back in about 10 days. But uh, any, any other thoughts on that from either of you? Always have your documents done. Or if there's ever an opportunity to get something renewed, renew it as soon as you can. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, it, you, you, you'll end up being one of our Ask the Experts tales of catastrophe and, and trauma, having lost a passport or, or missing a, a renewal. Or not yeah. Yeah. Brexit, Brexit just adds adds complications to that. Remember that um, passports to uh, the EU now have to have a minimum of six months validity on them. Just just get it done. I don't think it's, yeah. I don't think it's even, even a conversation. And yeah. on documentation and Brexit, uh, perhaps Nick, this is one for you. Could you give us, um, we have put the link to your brilliant feature about this in the um, chat, I think. But could you just give us a very brief overview of the um, GHIC, the alternative to the EHIC? Ian's asking about that. Yes, well, the, the, the EHIC is the old um, entitlement, the card which proved our entitlements to public health care in all EU countries, which meant that if you fell ill or you had an accident, you could go into any public hospital, go and see a doctor and you'd be treated 
at either free or very low cost. We obviously lost that when we left the EU, but a very similar system has replaced it called the GHIC. Um, it's so similar that you actually apply for it at the moment through the old EHIC system. Um, we don't know the full details of it, but it's re it, it, it's a big help to anyone who has a pre-existing condition and can't get travel insurance. Um, so it has no other way of, of, of uh, covering that risk of having to pay for treatment when they go abroad. But it doesn't cover all aspects of the a travel insurance policy usually would. So it won't get you back in an emergency through a, an air ambulance or pay your costs if you have to stay on longer in that country or, or give you cancellation cover, for example. But um, the, the article which is the link that is there will give you all the details it's very straightforward and it's a big relief that we do have that alternative because we've lost so many rights and privileges when we're traveling in europe now that it's at least we have managed to keep that one and the ehic that you have is valid until um yes good point that is on that's actually written on the card so you can still use that now that yeah. valid on until it runs out yeah yeah so a biggie for um, many, many Telegraph readers is, of course, ski. And Hannah's asked what so many people are wondering. Um, and she's obviously missed out on a ski holiday this year. Is it too risky to start looking at, at a ski holiday for next year for Christmas break? Um, or do you think that things will be back to normal? Well, I think the, the new normal for ski will be quite different to the old. But what do you reckon about booking? Well, we talked about this a, a couple of weeks ago. My, I'm I'm very gung ho about skiing for next next season. I I, I think I think it it I'd be, I'm feeling. I mean, this is again. We're, we're uh, it's important to em emphasise that we're dealing with hypotheticals here. We don't exactly know how this is going to pan out. We don't know what variants are going to do. But I would have thought that ski is is one of those uh, holidays that are sufficiently far in advance and also require advanced booking to be something that you could be thinking about now in terms of the the, the next season great family holiday it works incredibly well it's also if you're going to the alps one of those um, a, a series of destinations that do have all the structures and and requirements in, in place if, if anything does go wrong you're also likely i hope to be booking through uh, an abta bonded operator which i think makes huge sense for a ski holiday in particular where you're up against not only covid but changes in weather and and, and all the other excitements that we've all encountered when we've gone on ski holidays before nick Come on, ski. I'm, I'm so hopeful that it might be possible to ski this this season, but you know who knows. Last week of March, you don't know. Um, I, I think it's always the uh, the questions about Christmas. So I assume that there's a family element to this this uh, to Hannah's uh, booking. That if you want to travel at Christmas, New Year, February half term, or the Easter holidays, you want to book. Um, and also, the, it was well known there was a problem this season because so many people rolled over their Easter holidays into this season and probably looks like they're going to have to roll them over into next winter season as well. So there's going to be, uh, I think there'll be quite a lot of pressure on ski holidays next year. And um, I would personally, I would book, but it's a personal decision. Depends how risk averse you are. And then we've both summed up skiers everywhere. We don't know if we're going to be coming out of lockdown by May, but we will be going skiing in April. He will be fine. Now, what about ferries? So Brittany Ferries, Martin says, Brittany Ferries allowed us to move our ferry booking from last year to summer this. I still feel highly uncomfortable about the idea of travel. How likely will it be that... Brittany Ferries will allow us to move the booking forward another 12 months. I mean, I, I, I can't speak for Brittany Ferries. They've got an excellent reputation among our readers. They always win our best ferry company. Um, but they've got a business to run and uh, they, they may be flexible, but if it's perfectly feasible to travel, um, then it's, uh, and there are no restrictions, then they may play hardball and mm. there's not much you can really do about it i don't think but but they are a very responsive company who's very um focused on good customer relations so you, you've got you've got a chance but it so much depends on the situation in the summer that we don't know about yet i'm afraid 
So but you probably to... don't have you probably don't have any technical legal rights to insist on it. Put it that way. So advice to Martin would be contact customer services and just. Well, we, yeah, I, uh, we won't know until until we're nearer the time as well. I mean, I doubt very much whether they'd, they'd be prepared to make any any changes until we know how the summer is sitting. Surely, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I Martin's know, I think saying he's not is... comfortable about travelling, whatever happens. But yeah, so mm -hmm. I think it's just a case of communicating with them, Martin, and 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 um, pleading to their uh, better selves. Um, so Julie, like, like many people, we've just talked about the, um, the the rolling over of holidays. She had one in Borneo, had paid a fairly sizable deposit. If the worst happens and it's cancelled again, where does that leave us with this deposit? They'd booked with Audley Travel again, another very reputable company. Well, if it's you, you're still entitled. If it was, if it was cancelled, you're still entitled to a refund. And if it's cancelled again, you're definitely entitled to to claim your refund. And I think you'll find that Audley should be perfectly straightforward about about paying it. Um, Borneo in August still possible. Um, so but if you're absolutely clear that you don't want to go now i would inquire i would talk to them never cancel unilaterally because then you you're not entitled to a refund but uh, if you want to go keep your fingers crossed make a decision in three or four months time if it's cancelled i personally would ask for my money back and you'd be entitled to get that so, I mean, we're, you know, there's so much talk of vaccination um, across the media and, you know, we've talked about it almost nonstop. Do we think that airlines in UK immigration will accept proof of vaccination and not require quarantine in a hotel? And if so, when might this come into effect? Well, um, these are questions we're also asking. <laughs> Not sure that the government or the UK uh, immigration or airlines know, but um, perhaps we could just discuss what the the kind of the situation is at the moment and the kind of things that um, all of those involved in the travel industry will be uh, thinking about around what we're calling vaccine passports <clears throat> um, and uh, yeah, how how that's likely to um to play out i mean we saw today didn't we ben that um actually today quarantine hotels were were meant to be briefed on uh, what was happening but they haven't been so um, where do we go with this we're, we're sort of back we're, we're back to the environment that we will be operating in in summer and that's 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 basically what we're talking about and we had people like matt hancock last last week saying that by may every single um, it was possible that every single adult who, was, who needed a jab would have had a jab. So on that basis, we, we've got this sense that there could be an environment that goes, all British adults have had a jab. We decided that um, those under um, 18 or 16 don't require a jab in order to travel. We, we want you to provide proof that you've had a jab to travel. All these things could be there. Then in, in, the, in the broadest sense of things, you're relying on what the country that you want to travel to is going to offer you and whether they're going to want you to um, appear in that country. Now let's assume on that basis that the country does want us to travel, that the Brits want to travel. In order to have an environment that at that point works for travellers in summer, you also have to say that there isn't a, res a, a, a responsive uh, quarantine environment when you come back from that, that country. Some of those things will happen and some of those things may not happen and, and it's the degree to which everything operates smoothly in summer that is going to see, which is going to give us the sense of how much summer holidaying abroad for Brits is going to happen. I think it's 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 reasonable to assume that that you know in order to have a travel industry at all that they want that that's going to happen in summer we have to get to a point where some form of of uh, quarantine passport may be may be required we can we can see we can see the point where even countries like the Maldives and the Seychelles are already saying if you can prove that you have been vaccinated you can come to our country well that's great let's hope that. If that happens, when we come back from the, from our wonderful beach holiday in the Maldives and the Seychelles, we're not suddenly required to live in a Gatwick um, Best Western for two weeks in order to uh, reunite with our um, with our, uh, our nearest and dearest. So it is. I mean, I I, I sort of think I'm, I think we have to deal with confidences and we have to deal with attitudes to risk, as Nick says. But we've just got to give it some time with these announcements that we're going to have in a couple of weeks from uh, Boris Johnson with the sense that we need to see how things work in terms of spread of the virus and how that all happens when people go back to school. 
you know, it's still a way away in some hollows. You know, we're, we're speaking here in the first week of February, as I said right at the top of this conversation. There is enough time for developments to, to suddenly, well, not even suddenly, to, to gradually favour the idea of us going away with a vaccine passport in our, in our, in our back pockets, if necessary. I, I, for one, would be delighted to do that. I spent a lot of time as a backpacker with a yellow fever certificate showing that I'd have had a yellow fever jab. If it becomes part of the furniture of travel, then so be it. Um, I, uh, but, you know, it may be that that comes along. It may be that simply we, 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 we deliver air corridors and travel corridors as we did last year. Very limited travel, but it, it means you don't have to uh, quarantine when you return. I could see an, a form of that appearing. But, you know, as I say, it's early February. Let's let's see how we feel in, in May. Mm. So talking of May, uh, another message, uh, another question from Caroline. Um, her son um, planned to get married in San Sebastian last September. It was uh, cancelled and the couple's rebooked for the end of May. Um, what do we think the likelihood of them being able to be married there in May is? And they are travelling from the US. It's touch and go, I'd say. Yeah. As Ben says, this time, but yeah, it's 55. I've got a holiday to Greece booked for the first week in June, and I'm a little bit nervous about it. Um, but yeah, um, we'll keep our fingers crossed for them. But a simpler, a simpler prospect than traveling from the US to. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, I think there is this fact that, that, that I mean, in a way, again, just sort of to go back to the, to the situation we find ourselves, I think we've all mentally decided that, eight, that, that the Easter holidays are not going to be viable for foreign travel because, because we're not giving any indication that, that things are going to have changed from there. And then you can see this line sort of moving and you have to work out at which point after, after Easter you see that it is valid. You know, we can make the decision with more, with more accuracy and honesty the nearer we get to it. But at the moment, you can see the way Nick's thinking. He's going... You know, the early part of June looks potentially viable or not viable. That's a, that's in the balance. His confidence level, I would I would suggest, is going to be getting higher as the weeks go by beyond that. And it could be that all of us think in the back of our minds that, you know, late August holiday, that's pretty viable, isn't it? Until we've got a bit more, more news from the government in terms of what they're going to ask us to be doing when we travel in the summer, it is very hard to give an exact answer to, to poor Caroline in the US for, for mm. some wedding. For the rest of us who think, what would Nick do? Nick, we're all going to be joining you in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Martin, no, we don't mind you asking another question at all. <clears throat> so Martin um, lives in Cornwall, lucky you, um, and is expecting a lot of visitors again this summer. I guess you had a lot last summer. Um, I would concur. I think a lot of people are heading to Cornwall. Um, if um, So if Martin wanted to get away from Cornwall, somewhere in the UK um, that would be a bit quieter, um, what other kind of secret honeypots would you both recommend to Martin to escape Cornwall? Possibly one of the only people in the UK who will be trying to do that. <laughs> Pembrokeshire. Northumberland. I love Pembrokeshire and Northumberland. Yeah. What? Okay, Ben, Exmoor's got the, uh, uh, Exmoor, sorry, Pembrokeshire, did you say? You said Pembrokeshire. Yeah, uh, Pembrokeshire's got an extraordinary coastal part. Sorry, I'm checking which one you want to know about. Extraordinary Crystal coastal Exmoor, landscapes, you know. amazing, beautiful little towns, place to get out there in the countryside. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a, it's like a sort of slightly Welsh version of Cornwall, to be honest, uh, and, 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 and delivers all, and all the things you'd expect. Yeah. And Nick, you said Northumberland. Well, that, I mean, I live in Norfolk and, and so we're on the North Sea coast, but that's in the southeast, obviously, gets a lot of visitors and was very busy last year. But the further you go north up the east coast of England, the more the crowds dissipate and you get some very lovely long stretches of beach up that way. And actually, the Suffolk coast can be surprisingly quiet as well. Yeah. So um, there's some options actually in Suffolk too. But oh, uh, yeah, I agree with Ben about Pembrokeshire though. That's not surprisingly few people go. And yes, it's got some a stunning coastline. Mm. Um, uh, so Jessica is actually going to be heading to Cornwall. So um, uh, yeah, that's one of think. So, Ian, let's say it's July. I want to find out the real situation in Italy and France with regards to safety to travel, safety to stay in a villa or small hotel. 
who do I speak to for an independent view? Foreign office, travel agent, or question mark, I, I might fill in the gaps there with Telegraph Travel. Um, I Telegraph Travel newspaper every day and yes. look online. Our live blog literally documents um, minute by minute all the changes in travel. Um, we are we there with the latest news in terms of legislation, but not just in the UK, around the world as well. So with changes to um, to border control and um, and quarantine in various different countries and and across Telegraph Travel, you will find lots of advice pieces which we do keep up to date on a daily basis about what the different uh, restrictions are and and exactly as you are safety um and and how to travel so um if, if, if we were talking today weren't we were maybe setting up some kind of formal travel watch kind of uh facility yeah. on the website which would give you at a glance the situation in some of the key countries so hopefully we'll be able to do that yeah um so um I mean, I know that no, no, no first name there but mentioned issues with insurance my concern is being overseas and needing to isolate through a test and trace scenario track and trace rather scenario and having to thereby extend the period of holiday with extra costs so um no. i guess it depends whether you're a, a tour operator doesn't it nick that's one for you i think well tui last year did have an insurance policy which covered exactly that the risks of being stuck somewhere because you've tested positive or you have to isolate or either of those scenarios um i just don't think you'll find a commercial policy which will cover that if you look at it this way if you were wanting to to set up your own insurance company and you somebody asks you whether you would cover them for that risk at the moment you'd want a very big premium wouldn't you mm -hmm. uh because you wouldn't want to put yourself into that into that risk position so i can see why we all want that insurance but i can also see exactly why insurance companies think well this is an unaffordable risk for us to take at, at normal premium levels so again I think it's something which we have to either take on the chin or we have to turn to travel companies who have access to hotels and um, privileged rates and they've got the flexibility to cope with that kind of thing. Uh, it's a risk, but it may just be one of those that risks we have to take if we're going to if we're going to travel this year. Well, I remember um, when some of the pre-submitted questions that we were looking through before we started this event. There's, there's quite a lot of discussion about whether you can, um, uh, whether you're putting money at risk if you book in a British uh, holiday now, and in terms of what happens with coronavirus and things like that. And that's that's sort of the same balance. Cancellation is is, is one of the is one of the key things that we that always feels like a challenge when when people are booking. And I think, you know, just to develop what Nick's been saying. I mean, in terms of cancellation and 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 worrying about how that might affect a British holiday as opposed to something that you're necessarily packaging up and moving moving uh, abroad with. Um, it's really important that you you, you look at the at the cancellation policies that these providers are doing. I, I was looking at the um, Centre Parks um, uh, small print um, last week for a video that we were doing at um, uh, the Telegraph Travel, and they are, they are offering extraordinary cancellation policies, really, really, really well done until next year. That where basically within the six week period before you go, you can cancel and and, and your, your money will return. You don't you don't even need, really need to offer an advice. Bear in mind when you're booking holidays for, for the UK at the moment, the, the important thing to, to have in your mind is if you're doing it with a company like uh, Centre Parks, that's a, that's, a, that's a great way in. If you're, if you're doing it with a cottage rental firm or something like that, make sure that you can see what their policies are going to be. I noticed again last week when I was looking at things that places like the National Trust Holidays, um, they're, they're, they're going to adjust their, their cancellation policies in about one or two months when they can see what's going on with the, with the year. So, you know, keep, keep that in, in mind when you're, when you're booking things. Same with the Landmark Trust, they're also going to adjust their policies. And then, and then if, you're, if you're thinking of booking um, direct with a, with a, with a, with a say, a, cot a, a cottage owner, make sure you have that conversation about what happens if coronavirus gets in the way of this. What happens if, what happens if we have a tier system and, um, 
I'm sitting in a, in a tier that doesn't allow me to travel, but your uh, cottage is in a tier that, um, that, that allows it to stay open, you know, am I at risk for that? It's really important that you get that sort of thing talked through because some of the, some of the things that I've just mentioned are things that you can just have uh, dealt with very clearly and simply if you're doing a package holiday somewhere abroad. It's basically, that holiday has now been cancelled, here's your money back, or here's a credit, credit form, but if a holiday gets cancelled, you have a right to your money back. If you're doing it in the UK, you have to make sure that you've got similar things there that, that sort of act as an insurance policy that you probably don't have from a holiday perspective. I don't know if Nick's got yeah. anything to add to that. No, I mean, that's, that's, that's spot on, yeah. I mean, in fact, she answered, um, we've had a question from Melissa, I see, saying, would, would centre parts be a good bet for a UK family break this summer? Break this summer and I think... I'm not, I'm not advertising, I'm not paying. <laughs> no, no, but I think absolutely, but I would... If I were you, I'd book pretty quickly because Centre Parts operates at something like 90% occupancy in normal time. So I imagine they're very heavily booked already. So I get organised on that. Yeah, I thought um, Nick, uh, Ben had seamlessly uh, integrated uh, Centre Parks into his uh, response there. But thank <laughs> <Okay>. you. <laughs> no, I want to say I'm not on a retainer. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just talking about the fact that it's, it's really, really good to see, you know, companies being, being proactive about this sort of thing. I mean, yeah. I, I, what I want to see... The first thing I want to know is, is my holiday safe? And to see that on the front page of a website, who's ever website, is a really, really reassuring thing. Yeah. So um, we are now drawing to uh, the end of this session. Unbelievably. I mean, where is that 45 minutes gone? Um, so uh, we know about Nick's holiday. Nick's going to um, Greece, hopefully. Um, ben, have you got anything booked? No, you're a, you're a last minute booker. No, no, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm illustrating the, the situation exactly. Because at the beginning of January, I booked a week in Cornwall that I must talk to you about, actually, uh, Claire, during uh, during the summer. So that's absolutely nailed on, and that can't be changed. <laughs> I'm hoping to, to, to wait a little bit. Don't worry, I'm, I'm currently not booked anywhere. <laughs> I'm waiting until the last day of lockdown. <laughs> I'm hoping to wait a little bit longer. And I, I you know, if I possibly can, as I've been rabbiting on throughout this, I will be hoping to go uh, abroad if I possibly can in summer as well. Great. Well, um, <clears throat> I wish all of you present um, huge amounts of luck with your um, your own bookings. And I hope that we've helped ever so slightly tonight with that. Um, thank you very much, Ben. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, thank you all um, to everyone here for coming and watching. Keep the faith and we'll see you soon. <laughs>